Hello strangers and friends, my name is Grace, my pronouns are she and her, and welcome to episode 4 of Sometimes I Make Things, where I will be trying to knit a entire sweater in three weeks. Let me tell you about it. Today's date is January 5th, 2022, and my home province of Ontario has officially gone into a three-week lockdown, so that is ending on January 26th, 2022. But it possibly could be extended because Omicron is happening. Um, obviously, that sucks. Uh, indoor dining is closed, capacity for most buildings are down to 50% or less than 1,000, whatever is lower. Uh, a lot of events have been cancelled, other things like that, and uh, gyms, theaters, pretty much anything fun has been closed down. And I'm not going to pretend like I had plans. Nothing that I was going to do got cancelled. Um, but it still is really unfortunate to just see what's happening and what people are going through, and my friends are dropping like flies and getting sick. So, it's not the vibe. Uh, so I have decided to do something to up the vibe a little bit and I had a sweater quantity of gorgeous yarn and I had a pattern that I really wanted to make. Figured I'd marry the two. So the yarns that I got are from the Knitting Loft. They coincidentally had a Boxing Day sale so everything was 20% off and I've been wanting this yarn for a while so I snagged it and I'm pretty glad I did because it's working out great for this. So the base yarn that I got is Knitting for Olive Merino. It's a light fingering weight yarn, and I got it in the color Rust. Rust? Yes. Um, and this is a non-useful yarn, so that means it's more ethically created than other wools might be. And then this is Midnight Sol, which I believe means Midnight Sun, by Camarose. And this is in the color Brent Orange. Brent Orange? Burnt Orange, that's the vibe. Um, and this is also non useled And this one is um, baby alpaca, a little bit of tensile, and merino yarn. So she's fun as well. Um, this yarn has a white core to it, so it really has a really nice glow. And this is the love match right here. The pattern that I'm going to be making is the Gingerbread Sweater by Espastrigo, which is a free pattern. It is raglan style, straight sleeves, cuffs, split hem things that I am known to love. And we'll see how it goes. I am going to be making size four, which I believe was like a 52 inch bust. Um, it is supposed to be fit with positive ease. Um, I'm not going to go with as much positive ease as the pattern recommends just because I don't want to knit a very, very large sweater. I prefer something that fits me a little closer um, than like a super boxy style. So I'm going to do it the size four. And apparently I will need five skeins to do that. I might run out of the midnight sole, but if we do, I guess we're just making a short sweater. Um, so I got five skeins of each of these. It cost about $114, taxes included, Canadian, including the discount. Um, so I think it's going to be pretty luxe, and I'm excited to use these yarns, and I just, I'm excited about this. I'm not going to say I'm excited about the lockdown. But this has me having some more positive feelings, even just thinking about it. So today I'm going to cast on the collar, see if I can get that done. And kind of my rough plan is if I can do the raglan in one week, the sleeves in one week, and the body and hem in the third week, I should be able to get it done. But it'll be the fastest I have ever knit anything, probably, to get it done in three weeks. Like, I don't even think I've had socks in three weeks. Um, so I guess we'll see. Hope you stick around and find out. Y'all want to see a fit check? <laughs> ba -ba -da. So, today is January 10th, and this is the work that I've done up until January 9th. So, five days? Yes. Um, I have finished one skein each of Midnight Soul and Knitting for Olive, and <laughs> just 
Love, gotta love the knitting cables. I have three more repeats of the four row repeat left to do. So I think maybe it'll come down to here. So I'm feeling like it will in fact be a good fit around my arms and go low enough around my armpits because you don't really want wool right up in your armpit. Like let's give some room to breathe if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, I'm really liking it so far. The color's nice. I think it's more rich in real life. Like it's coming up more of a white undertone um, on the camera, but I think she's cute. I'm feeling motivated to do more. I have two days in my schedule to finish the yoke entirely. I think I can finish the yoke today. So it'd be nice if I could do sleeve separation either today or tomorrow and then start one of the sleeves. Then I get a bit of a head start on next week, which my second week of lockdown is going to be sleeve week. See if I can get two sleeves done in one week. But anyway, update. I'm feeling a little more optimistic about finishing this in three weeks. Stay tuned. Hello friends. Today is Wednesday, January 12th, so that means the first full week of the sweater challenge is complete. And I'm just doing a quick sleepy little bedtime um, check-in about progress. So, um, today I have separated for the sleeves. Haven't done too many more rows, but I basically just wanted to knit until my current ball of midnight soul ran out. So this is where I'm stopping on the body, and I'm going to move on to the sleeves. So I'm just going to snip my... This is my second skein of knitting for Olive. I'm just going to snip it and start knitting on one of the sleeves and starting my third of five balls. Yes, third of five balls. Um, I'm really happy with the progress so far. Based on measurements from a previous sweater, I think that this is going to fit me just fine. Um, really pleased with the fabric. I've really grown to love it. Um, it's coming up really yellow on my camera, but it really is a rust color. Um, I'm, I'm very charmed by it, and a lot of people have been giving me nice compliments when they see me knitting it on the color. I've got my little strawberry stitch stopper friends here. Karen Co, as always. Um, and also these cute little pink ones, um, which are just holding up the fort on my sleeve there. So, yeah, I pretty much achieved everything I wanted to in the first week. I am a little bit surprised. I <laughs> this is probably more knitting than I've ever done in a week. And it feels really cool to see all the progress just right there. And I am feeling more enthusiastic. I think I'm fitting... Uh, like maybe a 75% certainty I can do this, whereas before I was probably like 50-50 on whether it would get done. Uh, so we'll see. But anyway, next up is getting the sleeve on the needle and seeing if I can get a head start on week two. Cheers. pretend that I finished it already. <laughs> anyway, hello! Today is Monday, January 17th, and fit check? Sleeve check. Um, so this is just sleeve number one. I haven't even started sleeve two yet, and I'm supposed to have both of them done by Wednesday, and it's like 10.45 on Monday. So I got a fair bit of knitting to do, but overall, like, feeling good about the sleeve fit here. It's just a straight knit sleeve, pretty basic. Um, I'm planning on doing 100 rows to get to the length I want, and then we'll see about how long I make the cuff, but 100 is pretty easy to replicate, and I have my markers here. I'm at like 85 rows right now, and then there's this one over here. Um, it's not that it's taking me a long time to knit, it's that I'm not making the time to knit, so it's all on me. <laughs> but, um, it is really nice to try it on and just, you know, live the fantasy. But if I can get both sleeves done, then we're just onward to the body. Okay. That's my little update. 
I am really liking the material. I'm really liking knitting with this yarn. Knitting for Olive is like a new favorite of mine. Like I think I'm going to be making a lot of things out of Knitting for Olive in the future because it's just, it's been so consistent. It's been so wonderful. The Midnight's all pretty good overall. One of the skeins had like two, like it had a knot in it and then it had like what looked like a piece of dental floss woven into it. It might have just been like a really bleached piece of grass. But, you know, the Midnight's All is probably like batting an 80 for me, whereas the Knitting for Olive is just 100. So, yeah, that's my update. And let's cross our fingers and see if I can knit like a quarter and a full sleeve in two days. One more thing before I get back to knitting. I did cut my own hair. We are saying no to shaggy lockdown hair going forward. If we can't get in to see a hairdresser, we will do it ourselves because this is a DIY channel. <laughs> I guess we're just doing this. Alright, let's tell you. There we go. Okay, go girl, go girl. <sighs> Lay down. Hello. <laughs> And today is January 18th, and it is the end of week two of my sweater challenge to knit a whole sweater in three weeks. We are joined here by Miss Rouge, who decided that <laughs> my lap was very accessible on the floor and she was gonna sit in it. So we're gonna do it with her today. Um, so here's my sweater so far. Um, as you can see, I have finished the right sleeve. I just have some stitch markers on there every 20 rows so that when I knit the left sleeve here, um, every 20 rows I'll just move the stitch marker over and that way I can keep track pretty easily of how many rows I've done and how far I have to go. Knitting hack that I learned from Instagram. Um, so my goal for the end of week two is to have both sleeves done and that did not happen. Uh, I was pretty lazy <laughs> knitting this week. Oh well. Um, I finished yesterday this cuff and I did 40 rows of this sleeve. So there are 110 row sleeves and <laughs> ma'am, 10 rows of um, ribbing at the end. So I got almost half that sleeve done in one day. Um, so I am behind schedule, but I'm not irreparably behind schedule because I think if I really wanted to, I could get the sleeve done today, which is the goal, um, so that I'm only one day behind. So this is the beginning of body yaddy yaddy week. I'm trying to get that done. At this point in time, Sorry for me looking around. I have most of the skein of Men Not Sol that I started for this skein over here, but I have one full skein left. <laughs> and I have maybe a quarter of a skein currently attached to the project of Knitting for Olive, and I have two skeins left. I realized after buying the yarn that I was supposed to buy six skeins of Men Not Sol and five skeins of the um, Knitting for Olive for the size that I was doing. <sighs> She's so cute <laughs> and a little bit heavy on my arm. But anyway, this is just what you do for your vets. Um, so I think I'm going to need to order another skein. I'm just torn between... Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh no! Her booty fell off my lap. <laughs> okay, I think she's leaving now. Oh baby. Go lay down. Anyway. <laughs> um, okay, so I think I need to order another skein of the Midnight Salt. I am torn between whether I should <laughs> I'm torn between whether I should order it and have it delivered to my house and maybe that takes some time or if I should drive to Toronto and go to the yarn store in person. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards that. It is like a 40 minute drive to get to the knitting loft from me so partially that's not ideal given that it's wintry and uh, just 
two days ago we had like the most snow in southern Ontario since like the 90s in one day like it's a good foot maybe more um powdery snow but the roads like schools got shut down for two days in a row and that hasn't really happened here since the 90s where the entire school board is just shut down um so i don't know if the driving conditions are the brightest right now but also the knitting loft is like worth risking your life to get to if you know what i mean um yeah so kind of the plan right now is I don't know, just be paralyzed by decision making and then I'll eventually come to a decision. And if I go to the knitting loft, I will bring my camera along and do a little inside look if they allow me. And if I just end up ordering it, then we'll open the package together. Um, <laughs> you will find out momentarily what I do. Um, yeah, so overall, I am enjoying the process. I am loving the color. I am loving the fabric. And I just need to mosey a little bit more, but I have learned that if I want to, I I can pump out a sweater. <laughs> you just need to put the time into it. So we'll see if I can get the body and the sleeve done in the next seven days, and if I can get that extra skein of yarn, which I think I'm gonna need. Um, yeah, but we are getting towards the end, and the lockdown is two thirds done, which is nice. And the premiere apparently is going to give us a good news update by the end of the week, so we'll see how that ends. Um, but yeah, you know, just living through a crisis, we do what we can. <laughs> so yeah, stay tuned and I will check in with you later. Just while we're at this wonderful angle, allow me to give you just a full appreciation for the beauty that is this yarn combination. Because I know everyone genuinely cares, Rouge did find a comfy place to rest after falling off my lap. <laughs> the decision has been made. We are in fact going yarn shopping today. Come along. being a lot more running around than just getting yarn, but that's okay. The yarn has been got, bagels have been got, a special package has been got. Um, I'm glad to be home. I am quite tired, but we're gonna do a yarn haul anyway, <laughs> um, because I'm still really excited about it, even though I'm pooped. So hello again. Today also happens to be the four-year anniversary of me starting my knitting crafting Instagram, Azuma Crafty. So it felt extra fitting that I went and bought some yarn today. Additionally, I also got giveaway yarn um, from Elise Maid, who does a yearly unfollower giveaway, which is, has kind of a sassy theme to it. So super excited that I won that and it arrived today perfectly. So it's a double yarn day. So I figured I would open it all up on camera. Let's do a yarn haul. First things first, I am not naked. This is a tank top that I have on underneath. Um, but this is the update on the fit. I have finished all of the sleeve except the cuff. So January 21st, a little behind schedule, but I just need to do the body and now I have enough yarn to confidently make the body as long as I think I'll wanna make it. So, um, yes. So first things first, I got another skein of Midnight Sol. So this will be the sixth skein. Yes. <laughs> I got two skeins of Cascade Heathers, which this is actually the same yarn that I got um, to make my dad's hat just in a different colorway. I believe this colorway is called Chocolate, which I love because it's red. <laughs> like it's dark red, it's not brown. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a Getting Warmer Cowl, which is another free pattern by Espace Tricot, which is the yarn store that made this pattern, the Gingerbread Sweater. Um, I don't have any cowls or scarves really, so yeah. Got this lovely little number here, which is another skein of Knitting for Olive. It is not the same color as Gingerbread. This is Rust. This is, um, Claret, Claret. I know it's a wine word. 
not good with my wine words. Um, I got this ball to pair with another skein that I had, which I forgot to grab, so one second. Hello, I am back and closer than ever. So, I got Claret Claret to pair with this skein of Fawn, Fauna. This is Tough Love Sock by Sweet Georgia. My mom and sister got me this and two other skeins that were on sale um, for my birthday last year. And I wasn't sure what to use this for, couldn't quite think of the right thing, and then I landed on, I would like to make this into a shawl. So, the plan is to have these two together and make the Bojagi shawl, which is shawl, um, by Knit Boop. Um, it's a garter, mosaic, lace combination triangular um, shawl and I haven't actually made a shawl before like a full-size shawl so I feel like this is really promising um, I was considering getting another skein of rust to pair with this but I really wanted to bring up the red tones a little bit more so again this is actually the first time I'm holding them together and it's a really good match hell yeah and of course the knitting loft does their own um, dyeing they have their own yarn line there and colorways so I picked up a Darling, which is a mini. This one is called Rainbow Sorbet. And it's just this lovely, fun pop of neon on a white base. And once again, I forgot to grab the yarn to go with it. She is nothing if not chaotic. This is the first skein of Darling I ever got from the Knitting Loft, and this is in Lavender Kiss. So I thought these could be a very cute pairing together. And you know, just every time I go to the Knitting Loft, I think I'll pick up another one. Um, but I'm very happy about that. I think these could make for a really cute pair of socks. Um, I really like those shorties that I made last year, so I got shorties on my mind and these. <laughs> so that's everything that I got from the Knitting Loft. It cost me $70 to get all these together, um, which I do have a plan for this year that I do want to limit how much money I spend on yarn. I think last year I spent $500 on yarn, which is a stupid amount of money to spend on yarn when I didn't have a job for most of last year. <laughs> so um, now that I'm making money, I'm not feeling so bad about that. Um, but I think it's reasonable that I have a pretty decent stash of yarn now and I don't really need to buy more. And also I anticipate being gifted yarn throughout the year. So uh, I'm trying to cool it. Like, you know, if I can stay under 200, I think that's the best. Cause that gives me wiggle room that if I see something I really want, I can get it. If I want to get a sweater quantity, I can, but that's not an excessive amount. Let's get to the giveaway box. So, this came all the way from California. We're gonna crinkle a little bit. Ooh, actually, maybe I'll do like a box shot. One second. Mm, yes, cinematography is my passion. <laughs> so, Elise included this very sweet card, which I just opened up. Um, Happy New Year, Grace. I hope these things bring you some joy. XO Elise. Thank you very much, Elise. <laughs> All right, so first we got some masks because she accidentally ordered more, so she includes some cloth masks. We appreciate. We have here hand and body cell, coconut oil, shea butter, beeswax, jojoba oil, rosehip oil, and bergamot essential oil. Can I get into it? I believe it is child safe. Mm, yes. We have a knitted lips pin. <laughs> I love it. We open it. Yes, we can. Can we open it? Yes, we can. Yeah. <laughs> it maybe looks a little inappropriate where I placed it, but that's the spirit of the gift. Also, Elise's very own bacon, eggs, cheese, sandwich, breakfast club pin. Glorious. Lovely skeins of yarn. This is Hawthorne Klamath Falls Tonal Hand Painted. Nice blue black color. This one is also Hawthorne fingering and it is Newport hand painted. Lovely soft brown. And oof, this one's nice and soft. This is Cat's Kettle and this colorway is called Crackle. Oh, that's beautiful. It matches me, kind of. <laughs> as well as a cake of lavender soap, a restful sleep tea blend. This has raspberry lavender, dried mint, valerian rose hips, and dried orange in it. All good stuff. 
a cedar smudge stick, a lovely red journal for all your ASMR needs, and one black ultra fine sharpie, which I thought was hilarious. She said, our hearts may be black, but we stay ultra fine. Sold me immediately. <laughs> so that's that. I am very excited about all my little Yarny babies. And this giveaway from Elise Mead is truly wonderful. She put a lot of thought into it. She was very clever with the caption for it. Um, and yeah, like I, I feel cared for with this giveaway care package. Uh, so please do follow Elise. I will link her below and I will put her uh, handle here as well. Um, she does have some designs out as well, which are really cool, really sexy, really smart. Um, so if you're interested in any of those, definitely purchase and support them because Elise is wonderful. And all right. Um, Enough diddly daddling. I am going to drink some more tea. I'm probably gonna play some Pokemon Diamond, not gonna lie. But then I'm gonna get this sleeve done and start the body today, like I promise. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take any longer than planned, I hope. Um, yeah, I, I feel pretty decent about getting this done. I feel, you know, once I get this cuff done, I think the body's really gonna fly. Is it the most knitting? Yes, but it's also uncomplicated, so I live for that. Um, I will see you back here shortly. Take care for now. Hey friends, I have a confession to make. Today is January 26 and I did not get my sweater done. Um, I know. Devastating news. I don't even have it near me right now to show you how much I have done. But um, I'm on the body section and basically got real tired of having a monogamous knitting lifestyle. <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't started another project or anything. It's just knitting stockinette over like 250 odd stitches. Um, I was just like, this is not enough for me. Um, so I got a little bit burnt out on knitting it, but I'm still going with it. I'm very close to getting done. Um, I got 50 rows of the body done right now. Um, I'm thinking I want to be around 70 or 80 for the total length, a little ways to go. And then my plan for the hem is just to do like 10 rows basically on the split hem because I did 10 rows for the collar and for the sleeves. So I want that matchy matchy look. So I got a lot of knitting done in three weeks, but I didn't finish the sweater completely. <laughs> Gagged. I mean, just because I'm making a YouTube video about it doesn't mean I was going to be successful at it. But anyway, um, the mediocre update that we got from the government is that the lockdown isn't really ending today, though, anyway. Um, the reopening is actually going to be starting January 31st, which is Monday. Today is Wednesday. So the spirit of the sweater was to have it done during the lockdown and the lockdown isn't really over yet you can't do indoor dining so i think i think i get off on this one um so now my goal is just to finish it before the 31st happens so then that I can, way i can say that i started and finished the whole sweater um in one month time so um the other thing that i want to mention i don't want to get into it too much just because you know it's it's still just an egg in a basket um, but I applied to college today. Um, I've just had some crazy things go on in my life lately, and I'm actually currently on a leave from a university program. Um, but things are just, things have been tough, and I kind of feel like maybe college could be a good option for me to, um, build up some new skill set, potentially, or maybe I'll find something that I like doing more that's more sustainable than the program that I was in university for. Um, because ultimately, you know, you can love something a lot, but if it is bad for your mental health, then maybe you need to explore other options. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of in this place where, like, I've applied, I spent the money on applying, but I'll decide if I really want to go through with it at a later point. Um, but I think that was a big part of what kind of distracted me from my knitting, is that I was thinking a lot about my future over the past few weeks, and what I want, what I want to do, and where I want to be in life. Um, yeah, so you know what, I... I've been working on myself. Yeah, anyway, just thought I'd share that. What 
What is it? What is it? Oh my god. <laughs> you need to wait. <laughs> it's not dinner yet. It is 2.40. It is 2.40 in the afternoon. It is Sunday, January 30th, and it's sweater vlogging time. All right, soaking time is over, and first I would like to say that the color of this wet is beautiful. Second, there definitely has been some dye that's leached out um, during the soaking process. I'm going to guess that came from the knitting for Olive, just because that was a more saturated yarn. Um, but I'm going to make a note of that, um, because bleeding during the blocking process, especially if you were to do a color work design, is devastating. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, time to roll it out, spread it out, and let it dry. Ta-da! It's done! We are blocked, our ends are woven in, and it's done. <laughs> Hello again from my usual vlog spot. Did you miss it? I sure did. Today is January 31st, and everything is done! I am so happy about it. So. Did not meet the deadline that I had put in place for myself for three weeks, but I got this sweater done in three weeks and three days. So I had it done on January 29th while I was dog sitting Daisy, who you saw earlier. She did get her dinner. Don't worry. She enjoyed it heartily. This is all the yarn that I had left. So I am very glad that I went out and got another skein of Minapsol because I would definitely not have enough to make it the length that I wanted to make it. In total, it took me about 41 hours to knit this sweater, and it cost about $125 Canadian once I factored in that extra skein that I purchased. So it definitely was an investment of my time and money to make this, but I feel like it's a really classic design. I really like the color, and it's going to really fit in well with my wardrobe. So I'm very excited about it. I'm very happy about it, and I hope you think so too. As far as modifications go, nothing really all that major. I did do more increases on the front um, than on the back by basically just taking out extra increases that were recommended in the pattern so that it would fit my front a little better and my back a little better because I got a little more volume in the front than in the back in case you hadn't noticed. Um, I feel like that's given a good fit. I don't have a lot of bunching in the back at all really, so I'm pretty happy about that. It's got a good fit. Um, when picking up for the underarms, I picked up significantly more stitches, so it's very well filled in. There's no gaps or anything, and uh, sewing it up was no problem. Um, and then my hem. I did a slight difference on the hem where I moved more stitches to the front, or sorry, to the back rather, and um, gave a smaller front hem. I just thought it would be kind of interesting to try something different than just doing a uh, split hem right on the sides. And, you know, I'm not 100% sure about it. Um, but I think it's gonna grow on me. But you know what, I went for something, I tried something new, it's a design feature, it was intentional to do it that way, um, because I thought it could be interesting to try in future projects. Anyway, let me know what you think about the smaller front hand in the back. I thought it could give a good look to have like the split above the thigh area rather than just on the hip, but please tell me your thoughts. It was an experiment, just something to try. Other than that, I pretty much followed the pattern exactly. I just knit the body until I was coming close to running out of yarn. And I did about 10 rows on the front and 15 on the back as far as for the ribbing and then 10 rows for everything else. So I feel like it has a very unified, cohesive look and I'm happy about that. I definitely would recommend this pattern. I think it's very beginner friendly, but it also does have those German short rows at the beginning, which help lift the back neck so you get a little more space in the front. It was really easy to do the German short rows. It was my first time doing it, and I was flabbergasted by how easy it was to do. I was like, what have I been doing this whole time? Um, all of the modifications I did that I just mentioned, I detail more thoroughly on my Ravelry. If you don't use Ravelry and you'd like to know, just send me a message, and I will send you exactly what I put on Ravelry notes-wise. One more thing that I wanted to cover uh, just before signing off of this video and this vlog um, is that... Things have changed a little on my YouTube. Uh, some more people have shown up than I ever anticipated would. Um, and I feel a little awkward addressing it just because it was a surprise and it was unexpected and it does genuinely bring a little cheer to my heart um, that so many people have shown an interest in what I'm making and what I'm doing. And there's so many nice comments were left 
um, people just saying really wonderful things and I just <laughs> I don't know what to say other than thank you for being here I'm really glad to hang out with you and the reason why I made this channel initially is that I wanted to connect with more people and I wanted to build that sense of community and I just feel really happy that you guys are here and you want to join in and hang out so thank you from going from strangers to friends <laughs> Uh, I hope that you continue to enjoy the content that I put out and I really do like hearing the feedback as well and seeing what else I can do and what else I can make. Um, I really am on a journey with this YouTube channel. I really want to learn different editing skills and content creation skills as well as leveling up my crafting abilities as well. Um, so I'm not 100% sure what route I will take but I want to experiment with different formats of video and different things of ways of filming and things that I'm covering and different kinds of filming techniques. I really just want to learn a lot. So expect, you know, I don't think I'm really going to follow a strict format. I think I'm going to play around a lot and uh, see where that takes me. I am going to aim to put out a video monthly, like having 12 videos for this year is kind of my overarching goal. I want to put a lot of work into making them something that I'm proud of putting out there. Um, as well as just with the knitting, you can't really, I mean, I'm sure there's some people that are making weekly videos, but I, I can't knit that fast to make weekly videos. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to aim for about monthly. If I can get two a month out, that's great. I also live in a house with three other adults and we have limited internet, so I don't want to take up all the gigs by doing uploads. So that's basically what you can expect from me. Something a little different each time, maybe monthly, maybe twice a month. And we'll go from there. We're going to discover it together. <laughs> as far as what you can expect in the next video, working on this one project for 24 days has me hungry to cast on something new. Um, I was making a list in my uh, knitting journal, the red journal I showed earlier in this video. I'm making that my projects journal. Very quickly, I came up with five projects that I all have the yarn for that I all want to cast on. So. The next video is going to be a bit of a stash video as well as a cast on party, I think. So I'm going to show you what I have, what I have planned, and uh, get the ball rolling a little bit. Go from one whip to too many whips. Like, that's the goal. <laughs> I hope to see all of you there. Until next time. Bye, friends. Hello, strangers and friends. Gotta get those angles. Come closer, my pretty. <laughs> okay, turtleneck. Like, united we stand. She's adorable. <laughs> We gotta break in the sweater and get dog hair on it as fast as possible.